This is worksheet 8 of the gas laws packet. Uh, so this is the worksheet where we introduce the third and final gas law that we will learn in this unit. Uh, so this law is called the combination gas law because um, it's sort of a combination of both Charles law and Boyle's law. So this is the law and the set of equations that we need to use when both temperature and pressure are changing. So basically we can think of this oops, as when everything is changing, right? Or in other words, nothing stays constant. So Boyle's law was temperature was constant, Charles law Pressure was constant, and here with the combination gas law, everything is changing. Nothing is constant. So we will do two example problems, and then you will do the rest when you get to class. Uh, this is the sort of general uh, equation for the combination gas law, and of course if you turn to the gas law cheat sheet near the periodic reference sheets in the front of your packet, you will see um, actually this time six different versions of the equation since there are six different variables so we could solve for each one of them. So again, just make sure you're careful about which version of the equation you are using. And just like with Charles' law, right, whenever you input information about temperature into any of these equations, temperature must be in Kelvin, even if the final answer is supposed to be um, provided in Celsius. When you put the numbers into the equation, they must be in Kelvin. All right, so example one. Our sample of gas has a volume of 46.5 milliliters. The temperature is 28 degrees Celsius, so right away, I'm going to do 28 plus 273, convert that to Kelvin, and cross out my Celsius temperature so it doesn't sneak into my problem. My pressure is 785 torr, and I want to know the volume at STP. So again, this is telling me both about T2 and P2. Standard temperature is 0 degrees Celsius which if we convert it to Kelvin is 273. And because my pressure has been established in units of torr, my standard pressure is 760 torr. So the combination gas law that solves for V2 says that you multiply P1 times V1 times T2. Careful of the subscripts there, right? That one's different. And then on the bottom, we have P2 times T1. So again, just be careful to get your subscripts in the right places. All right. Uh, so I'm going to plug this in, and, and notice I'm going to put parentheses around the top numbers. This is the equation where order of operations sometimes gets problematic, depending on what type of calculator you have. So we're going to do 785 times 46.5 times our T2, careful there, which is 273. And then on the bottom I will divide, my P2 is 760, times my T1, which is 301. All right, now I really want you to put this into your calculator um, because I want to make sure that you know how to enter it properly in your calculator, each one's a little bit different. When I'm putting it into my calculator, I am actually putting these parentheses around the top three numbers, then hitting divide, and then putting parentheses 760 times 301 and parentheses. And I get uh, 43.56. Uh, my units established for volume are milliliters. If you're not getting 43, if you're getting some really big number, or some incredibly small number, your calculator is probably misunderstanding the order of operations and you need to add parentheses. All right, um, example two. 
very similar. Uh, the original volume is 42.8 milliliters. Our pressure is 735 torr. And our temperature is negative 40. Now that might seem wrong to some of you, but remember, Celsius can be negative. It's Kelvin that can't be. But when we convert that negative 40 to Kelvin, it's 233. It's a positive number, so that's okay. But don't forget that negative there, because that makes a difference. Okay. Um, they want to know the new volume at STP, which means a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius, or 273 Kelvin, and a pressure of 760 torr. So we're going to use the same equation as we did above, being very careful to get the right subscripts in the right places. And P1 is 735, V1 is 72.8, T2, oops, that wasn't supposed to be a parenthesis yet. Uh, T2 is 273, in parentheses, divided by P2, 760, times T1, 233. Alright, so in my calculator, I'm going to hit open parentheses, 735 times 72.8 times 273, close parentheses, divided by, open parentheses, 760 times 233, close parentheses. And that gives me 82.49, and my units are milliliters. All right, so again, the thing that will catch the most people up is not converting Celsius into Kelvin. Or some of you you know, up here, convert Celsius into Kelvin, but then since you don't cross out the Celsius, somehow the Celsius sneaks back into the equation. So if you end up with like a negative number of volume, that would be a signal something's wrong. If you end up with a zero volume, again, you probably uh, didn't convert into Kelvin. Um, and then the other thing is to remember that STP tells you something specific about the final temperature and pressure. Uh, so the good news is, is that that is the last of the new information for this unit, and the rest is going to be practicing uh, this third gas law and then reviewing all of them.